What's up, After Buzzers? You're watching After Buzz TV's Spotlight on with Deborah Kaplan and Harry Elfon. We'll be talking their brand new show, Mary and Jane, as well as various other topics. So you're going to want to stick around. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. See, there we go. That's how we start hot, guys. You see, that was a perfect choice. That was a perfect choice. We were going on and on about what we were going to come in with. Deborah, this is a perfect choice. Major Lazer. Get it. <laughs> uh. There we go. Now, you said this is this is from an episode of Mary Jane, right? Yes, it is. This is appearing in an upcoming episode. We'll be talking about that. Guys, you're watching After Buzz's TV, us After Buzz TV's Spotlight On with my guest, Deborah Kaplan. Harry Elfon, how are you guys doing? We're doing Great. good. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having us. My name is Ty Matthews. You can find me on social media at Ty Matthews PMA. So there's various other after shows. We will get to that later. But let's talk about your guys' brand new show, Mary and Jane. Amazing show. I love... I just watched the the pilot just a couple of days ago. Uh, it's... Well, we were talking about it a little bit before we came on, when we were off mic, about this kind of... The growing uh, kind of weed culture, I guess you could say. Do you think there's there's kind of more and more of an audience for shows like this? We'll find out if there's an audience. <laughs> right. But they're definitely, they're definitely making them. I mean, right. you know, ours is one of the first. Uh, there are a couple others. HBO has one. And I know there are a bunch in the pipeline. So, uh, sure. yeah, it's just becoming... It's, I mean, look, we wrote the script two years ago mm -hmm. when we just saw dispensaries popping up all over town, all over Los Angeles. We right. thought, hmm, there's something, something to this. Might be a fun uh, setting for a show. And then we just seem to be at the, at the just very front of that wave. And then everything caught up to us as it took a while to produce the show. Sure, sure. And you guys you guys just kind of I was I was reading another interview, you guys just kind of wrote it for fun, just sort of on a on a whim, right? Well, we we had been taking a bunch of meetings at development season and people said, What what are you thinking about? And we said we have this idea about these two girls who deliver weed and people kept saying, Oh, so it's like weeds. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's like weeds. And by the third time we heard, Oh, so it's like weeds and we kept saying, It's not really like weeds, we just said, you know what, we're gonna go off and write it. Because it was hard to describe. You know, there's going to be a talking dog, and they're going to deliver to, I'm not ruining anything for anyone, you know, a skeleton and a turkey or in a bed. <laughs> right. It was, you couldn't really describe that in a room. So, And also we wanted the opportunity, if we couldn't get it made somewhere, that we could go off and shoot it ourselves, maybe mm. with some of our friends, and, you know, put it up on YouTube or put it up somewhere else online and have the opportunity to make the show the way we wanted to make the show. It seemed like the kind of idea that was small enough. It was just two, you know, two young women. You need a car, you need a few locations. It just felt contained enough that we could just go off and make it if we, if we really wanted to. It just seemed like it would be fun to do that. We'd spent a lot of time, you know, in the feature world, and then we spent a lot of time developing just various pilots that we'd shoot but wouldn't go to series, and it felt like, let's just, let's just make something. Right. Uh, and then MTV ended up buying it, so we didn't have to do it ourselves. And yeah, I was going to ask about that with this being, is, is this your first foray into a full season of, of an episodic? Yeah. So yeah. How, are, how are you guys kind of adapting to that, to that skill set? I'm really tired. <laughs> <laughs> so tired. It's, it's a lot um, going on, right? Yeah, this, uh, someone asked me this morning, so I think this time last year, we started pre-production. We started pre-production on the pilot. On the pilot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our first episode aired a week ago. So it's been a full year straight of production. Um, and it's, you know, it's exhausting. And we're used to, you know, we're coming from movies. We, we've uh, made a bunch of movies. And television, it's like directing a movie, but at the same time you're randomly hopping through time mm -hmm. because you are constantly focusing on different episodes. So it's like, oh, well, you're writing this one, but you're going on set to shoot this one. And then you have to look at a cut from another one. Like, I'm... You know, it's the showrunners. Everybody says the same thing, but it is, you definitely have to split your focus. That said, it's tons of fun. Sure. It's just nonstop action. It's constantly going. You're juggling a lot of balls. You really don't have time to think about anything else. And it's, it's um, you can see why people really want to do this job. Absolutely, yeah. Now, you mentioned you mentioned some of the stuff. You mentioned the talking dog. You mentioned the skeleton and the turkey in bed. It's... It's funny because when you when you start watching it, you're you're expecting it to be grounded in this reality, and then it kind of jumps into this whole kind of other plane of sort of surrealism. Where did that? Where did the decision to to take it to that area come from? I think that's you know part of the joy of 
doing a show that's about weed is, you know, they can, because we were sort of limited to with our resources, we wanted to sort of be able to go anywhere mentally, creatively that we could. Mm. And it was funny, and at the beginning, I think one of MTV's notes when they looked at the script, they only really had two notes, and the two notes were, does there need to be a talking dog? And did it have to be a skeleton and a turkey? And we said, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's for us, that because that says to us, this, anything can happen in this mm. show. And to their credit, you know, as the script started to come in, as we wrote them, they would say, you know, we, there were a couple more normal episodes, and they would say, we miss that. We miss the weirdness. Where's the weirdness? And they really want us to infuse that into every episode after that, which was great. Right. Can you can you tell us about kind of the weirdest place that you go to during the season? Uh, I think maybe next week might be the weirdest one, the one that's coming up next yeah. week. Yeah. Yeah, it might be. It's just, I think it's the one that we... We pitched it to the network last because we thought they may just think we completely lost our minds. And right. actually, the episode itself ends up, it plays, it doesn't play as crazy. You know, like the, the episode that just aired on Monday had a threesome between Susan B. Anthony and our character Paige and, and somebody a in a bee costume. A bee costume. <laughs> there you so go. It, you know, it, it's hard to say which one's the craziest, but this one conceptually, I think, was probably the one that seemed like the biggest pill to swallow. It was the mm. one where we, you know, you turn in first a story idea before you even go to outline it was the one we turned in the story idea and we said there's no way right. they're gonna they're gonna come back and say like you've you've lost your minds forget it mm-hmm. um and they went yeah they all right we like it blink. go do it they're like great sounds great <laughs> i mean the things that they care about is you know it's like the network they like as long as there are stakes and as long as it's a good story and right. the characters are emotionally connected to what's going on that's okay great we can do that then sure, there can be a turkey wearing sunglasses. Right. Oh, this is, well, this, this is all, yeah. This is, but this is a whole Upcoming new... Upcoming one, yeah. Can you yeah. give us any hints about it? Or are we well, gonna they, they, I think they spoiled it a little. They on may the, have spoiled it, but I don't, I don't, need, to, I don't yeah. need to be guilty of that. I don't know, you That's can. That's fine. All right. You can. can. It's up to you. Um, it, in, it involves... It's going to be a uh, letdown when you say it. It involves... <laughs> well, I don't know. Look, let's just say it involves lube with weed in it. All right. All right. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> tip of the iceberg. I feel like that's, yeah, that could go on any... Just yeah. the tip. <laughs> just the tip. Just to see how it feels. It's I fine. always lost that game in college. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> now let's talk about... This is YouTube, right? I can say anything. Uh, you can say whatever you like. Whatever you like, guys. It's fine. <laughs> um, let's, let's talk about the casting a little bit. We, You know, you talked a little bit about about running into some some kind of roadblocks with with not having such established names in the show. What kind of what kind of hurdles have you have you faced with that? Um, well, I mean, it, first of all, I mean, and, and, well, the thing that's great, I have lost mm. the ability to speak. Um, the thing that's was great is that MTV let us cast unknowns. There was no pressure to cast names, have them be you know any kind of recognition. So, mm. which is really fun and very rare in television, because you always are, feel the pressure to cast somebody recognizable, whatever the whatever the part is, whatever the show is. Mm. Um, so that was really fun, but what comes with that is when you want to do guest starring roles, you really just have to call friends to say, will you come and be on the show? Because they don't know what the show is, they hear it's about weed, they hear maybe MTV, which brings a certain show to mind for them. Mm. Uh, so there were definitely challenges in getting people to show up and come to play. Uh, but we got a great, I mean, we, you know, we just through calling our friends, we got a great look. Seth Green's on the show, Andy Daly's on the show, Missy Pyle was on Monday night. Mm. Um, Chrissy Fit actually, she actually came in red, which was great. Judy Greer is going to be on. Oh, fantastic! Uh, Sosha, uh, Sosha, and we got, and this was just, this was through uh, the director, uh, Utkarsh, yes, and uh, um, Lance. Lance Reddick. Oh. Oh, amazing. From The Wire. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, All Lieutenant, right. I mean, Lieutenant Daniel showed up on set, and we both freaked out. <laughs> we don't often get starstruck. Yeah, it was hard but to speak. It was the one person I was like, can I get a picture? Oh, for sure. Yeah, Absolutely. I know I'm the showrunner, but I can't get, can I get a <laughs> what, picture. Gonna not take a picture of Lance Reddick? I don't have to. And he was great. Super funny. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Now, how did, how did Snoop Dogg's involvement with the show come about? Well, Snoop and... Um, his partner Ted Chung and Mary Jane uh, were talking to MTV at the same time that we had just sort of started rolling with our production. Um, and they had wanted to do a show that was in this space. And MTV said, you know, we have something that has sort of just started to go. And coincidentally, obviously, you know, Mary and Jane, Mary Jane was very close. And they showed them the script and they said they would really like to get involved. Um, and 
that's sort of how it happened. It's just, and you know, we had actually had connected uh, with someone else in their world prior to that when we were doing our research. So it seemed really natural for us all to get together. And, and bit by bit, things just sort of fell into place. Like we had written a cameo in, and our dream was Snoop. And this was before we kind of knew that they were curious about it. Yeah. I mean, I think they'd been talking. So that worked. He's going to appear in the season finale. And then he was. Then he said, I'm, I'd love to write you a song or mm-hmm. a theme song. And we were kind of blown away. And yeah. Just, you know, now there's now Snoop singing the theme song. So I have five seconds of it because it's a 20 minute show. <laughs> but, but, you know, it's still great. It's, it's still there. Snoop. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, now, MTV isn't necessarily known for a lot of a lot of episodic comedy. How did how did that relationship come about, and how do you think how do you think you guys kind of complement each other? I mean, when we when we heard MTV was curious about the script, was interested in the script, mm. you know, we had a lot of questions. The first was because we wrote it kind of hard R, uh, and we said, "Can you say this language on MTV?" Not that that would have been a deal breaker, by sure. the way. But so we were just curious, and when we met with them, they said, "Yes." You know, we'll, we we're happy to beep whatever we can't say, but more. We and, and what became clear was they really wanted to change MTV's brand and scripted television. Right. You know, they wanted to kind of get away from the teen stuff, do edgier. They really wanted to push the envelope, and we were kind of happy to try and be the show to to rebrand in a way, in a small way, but but still, it was, it's fun to kind of trying to chart new territory for them with the show. Right. All right. Anything to, to add to that? No, what do you say? That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. It's it's interesting that that uh, that yeah. After kind of after all these years, it's it is the landscape is is kind of changing altogether. And I know you guys have been asked about. Obviously, you guys wrote and directed Josie and the Pussycats, and it was a whole MTV was a whole kind of different ball of wax back then. Yeah. And so now it's almost like like it's come full circle. Yeah. Um, I think. You know, MTV was that MTV, which I think is a very different MTV than is now. Mm. That was sort of MTV at, I think it's just sort of the very, very crest, I think, um, before uh, they stopped showing music. You know, right. TRL was still on, Carson, and it was like sort of the height of commercialism and boy bands and manufactured pop music. And, you know, we. People had, buying CDs. You know, we had come up on the MTV with, you know, Mark Pellington and mm. McCarthy and, you know, those people where it, it was, we were, we were definitely poking fun at it, but MTV was definitely in on the joke too yeah. with us. They were very cooperative. Carson was in on it. I think people kind of misunderstood that movie too. I mean, you either got it or you didn't. You got that it was a satire or you felt like we were the biggest commercial whores on the planet. There was <laughs> sort of no one in between who, you know, you, it, it was definitely one or the other. Right. Um, and honestly, no one at MTV has ever mentioned that to us at all. Right. I don't think there's anybody who's still there. <laughs> Maybe not. Sure. So it's b- between that and also between Mary and Jane, they're both kind of very much rooted in, I mean, I don't want to sound cliche, but I guess the, the youth culture of of the the kind of era. What do you think are some of the biggest differences between, between say, the culture of back then and, and the culture that you guys are are kind of um, connecting with now? I think it's, you know, I think it, the things, you know, it's about what people are passionate about, what people get caught up in. Mm-hmm. You know, people kind of focus very intently on what the thing is now. It's really just finding out what that thing is, you know, whether it's people in Silver Lake lining up at a restaurant that serves dry toast right. um, or people freaking out about a boy band. It's that same fervor, um, mm-hmm. but it's, oops. Uh, and it's really, for us, it's really just kind of what do we want to focus on? Uh, what's the mania that we want to focus on? Right. I think. You know, it's, 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 a, it's looking at things with a slightly, I mean, it was much more satirical in Josie, which really was a satire. Mm. Um, this is more of the story of the girls, but there are little touches of satire throughout. Yeah. Uh, in terms of what's going on right now in Los Angeles. Mm. Just tweaked up a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Now we talked about about casting, you know, kind of unknowns for the show. How did you guys land on on the leads? Scout, I think, uh, came in the first or second day of mm-hmm. casting, and you know, we always talk about, um, you know, with casting, you're just sort of watching a whole bunch of people come in and sort of pretend to be that person, and then someone comes in and they just are that person. And she wasn't who we were initially picturing either as Jordan. That was not even the 
physical type that we had in our mind, but she came in and she's such, she's such an original. I mean, there's no one out there like Scout. And she came in and it was, after she read it, it was really almost impossible to watch anybody else read it and think of someone else in the role. Mm. Yeah. And then it became, uh, because we cast her, we actually cast her and then it was like, okay, who's gonna work with her? Mm. And that was a big search. Yeah, uh, and we read a lot of people, and that's you read wonderful actors and people who are really talented, but for whatever reason, they're just not who we think is that person. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to ex you explain that to actors sometimes, and it's just like, well, why not me? Right, you know? right, right. It's like this actually has nothing to do with you. It's more <laughs> about us and what we're looking for, and just that 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 thing. And it wasn't until a few days before we were ready to shoot the pilot that we actually I mean, we had read Jessica, or she came in to read with our casting director, and then she was gone working on a movie. And finally, we met with her, mm -hmm. and it was like, "Oh, well, this is it. She's clearly, she's clearly Paige." Absolutely, yeah. And the chemistry is is definitely there. It's yeah. awesome to see them interact. You know. Um, now you talked about about kind of writing it as a hard R originally, and and I know it's it's still essentially the same. But are there any are there any kind of big differences between your original vision and and what we're seeing now? That you kind of had to had to abandon at any given point. I mean, it's little things. Like, sure. You know, it's it's really corporate stuff. Like, obviously, you're dealing with advertising. Um, you know, I think in the I don't know if you saw the show that was on last night. At the end of the episode, um, there's like a a news piece where the character of Tanya, who has come in and sort of consistently wrecked Paige's life, has invented this car that gets you high. And it's the hot box and it has taken off and it's become a huge thing, the hot box. And mm. they're doing a news stand up and we had we were just looking for cars and it turned out a lot of people in our crew had uh, silver. Don't say it. A, a certain, certain brand. silver <laughs> car that is a hybrid that is like sort of the king of the hybrid market. I'm really can't fucking say that. I don't think you should say it. We we spent a lot of money to change the cars and it folks. rhymes with Schmeas. <laughs> and um we shot them and apparently I guess Viacom and Shmoyota <laughs> have a very synergistic relationship and they buy a lot of advertising uh, sure. and and me and then we got to post and it had you know people had seen it somehow so it got to the wrong person or the right person who said like you can't you know we don't have the money to reshoot it sure so you spend all this money in post trying to make those cars not look like those cars and still preserve your scene. Yeah. You know, so those hot boxes now kind of look like strange cars that you've never seen before. <laughs> sure. I mean, you never will on the road. Thing, it's, it's, it's weird things like that. It becomes like weird little corporate legal things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have wonderful like like lists of emails that I've held on to, like of, you know, you have to remove this many thrusts from the sex scene or like you can say jizz but you can't say cock. And like, you know, those <laughs> right. are great things to hold on to but it's not, it's really not there's nothing creative that no. we've been we've been uh, held. I mean, the only thing in the pilot, there was a scene in the pilot where the dog, the talking dog, we cut to his dream, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and they thought, do we have to see the dog's dream? <laughs> like, we'll give you the talking dog. Do we have to go inside his head and see his dream? We thought, all right, maybe that does take it a little too far. <laughs> it's not a cartoon. So uh, uh, right. that we changed. But literally, other than that, they've been so supportive. And you can't, and, and you can't show the <laughs> dog getting high. Oh, OK. You can't even there was a the dog made some comment about that he ate some cookies that they left out and he felt funny. And they're like, We get a lot and I get that. They get a lot of emails and like death threats from PETA and they don't need that. And I wouldn't want to visit <laughs> sure. that on them either. Sure. And so. I don't like when people get their dogs high either. No. Right. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not we, what it was about. We, we have dogs. Yeah. Sure. We don't get them high. Um, on the, on the topic of of things getting cut, you know, it's okay, it's on the topic of things getting high. On, like, on the topic of getting we'll get to high, guys, let's get into it. Um, no, it's just it, with with such a funny show, it it always occurs to me: is there a lot that that ends up getting cut? Are there a lot of kind of takes, a lot of different different uh, lines, things well, like that? You know, what's funny is you know we have a certain way that we write mm -hmm. where we get accused a lot of like you're writing too long, you're writing too long, and our producer would say like it's too long. There's not enough time to shoot it. You'll never use it all. Mm -hmm. It's going to wind up on the cutting room floor. And we do write long, but our actors talk really fast. And we know it's it's going to fit. And it's mostly going to fit. And they would sit, you know, at the table reads, and they sit there with the stopwatch, and they time it out. <laughs> and they make you really, you know, it timed out at 28 minutes. And you're, it has to be 20 minutes and 30 seconds on the air. And what are you going to do with that extra seven minutes? 
And then you get into the cutting room, and sure enough, it's like 21 minutes. Mm -hmm. And the one there's an episode that we directed that they kept saying, cut it down, cut it down, cut it down. And we cut it down, and we got into the editing room, and we did sure. not have enough oh, to geez. make our yeah. running time. It was so. fine. I mean, it ended up fine. We ended up finding the footage sure. to make it work. But, sure. uh, but yeah, there's not a ton not a of stuff that over. we don't use. We managed to make everything work. I mean, there are... And there's actually not a lot of alternate takes. We didn't do a ton of improv. We uh -huh. just didn't have the time. And we also tend to write pretty dense, for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. And everything kind of connects. So it's hard. If they start improv you go off on a tangent, then you got to get back to what's scripted. And right. then it's the scene's twice as long. And so. we're shooting an episode in four days. There's mm -hmm. not a lot of time to, like, unfortunately, to mess around. Right. You, know, you just you got to get the work done. And it did seem like there was a, a, a quick turnaround with this, right? What, how long did yeah. it take to, to shoot shoot everything? You mentioned everything's everything's kind of cut and edited, right? We started shooting in April, right? Yeah, we started shooting in April. It took us, it was, you know, four days an episode, ten episodes. So mm. however you do the math. Right. Because, because I can't. <laughs> um, and, We're not uh, good numbers. And, yeah, the, we, you know, some shows, they're making them and then they're airing them a couple weeks later. We did have the benefit of being done with shooting and you know because at one point it was going to air in the summer and then they just figured well let's launch in the fall so mm -hmm. it gave us a little bit of room just to be cutting and not have to worry about stuff being on the air right after we shot it right uh but it was still it still felt fast yeah i can imagine definitely i know people who you know their shows are finished and they have to wait almost a year till it airs and they're just kind of sitting around biting their nails right exactly we still have our finale to mix and that's about it really yep. Nice. Uh, now you guys have been have been writing and directing as a team for so long. How do you guys kind of handle working as a unit, and and what are some of the differences between between going solo with writing and directing? I mean, we haven't done much solo. Mm. Um, gross. Just spat all um, over the table. <laughs> Nobody saw that. Clean up. Very few people are watching this in full everybody. HD. Now Most they're taking it back frame by frame. Now everybody Buffers. knows. <laughs> it's, it's too. <laughs> Um, but, I mean, we've been doing it for so long, we've kind of got a system down. Mm. Um, I don't know what it is, really, but just kind of, we're both there on set together. Right. Uh, and we're both, you know, after a take, we'll kind of look at each other and quickly discuss. Usually we're in agreement about what has to happen. Mm. I'm not really certain how one person could have done that job. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, at least I couldn't have done that job. Uh, right. I would have had a full mental breakdown. Right. It's, it's just tremendous. It's tremendous. And I was trying to explain it to my parents, and I said, it was kind of trying to like read two books at a time while three people were screaming in your ear. <laughs> right. You know, when you're trying to shoot two episodes and you're going back, you know, you're block shooting, so you're going back and forth. And you're trying to prep the next. I shouldn't be holding this, should I? Um, you're just sorry, cord. Um, and you're going back and forth, and you're during lunch, you're running and watching casting tapes, and you're going to um, a production meeting. But someone just needs to be on set while you're shooting, mm. and then someone needs to be out in a van scouting locations for the next. There just literally isn't enough of both of us, let alone one person. I mean, that was the good thing about being there being two of us, because we really wanted to be on set, because it was such a strange tone, and we definitely knew we were going to have to manage the tone on set, but with two of us, one of us could go off mm -hmm. and scout with the director that was coming in, and go look at locations, and make sure everything was okay, and have a production meeting about the next block, while some we knew the other person was on set running things, and that was great, to be able to you know, kind of split the focus of the team so that we could be doing th two things at once. Yeah. Um, you have all these plans. Like, oh, I'm still going to find time to work out. <laughs> I'm going to meditate at all lunch. The, the we, best you know? intention. We bought all yeah. these mats, and we were all going to do, like, the seven-minute workout. Or what is it? It was seven, the seven-minute seven workout. workout. I was like, was it, it seven happened, seconds or seven minutes? It was it seven It happened minutes. once. <laughs> we did one seven-minute workout. And then you're all sweating. You're like, that was a terrible idea. <laughs> it took me an hour from, to catch my breath. It was awful. It's like, why are you still monitor. sweaty? Because <laughs> I haven't worked out in two months. <laughs> Yeah, you really do fall apart. Now, in terms of, of writing as a team, how do you guys' writing process usually uh, work writing collaboratively? Well, I mean, on this show we had a staff. We had mm -hmm. a really great group of writers, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we don't want to, like, leave them out. That was, no, not It was a really different experience, too, because we are used to sort of writing everything ourselves. Yeah. But um, I guess in terms of, of either the pilot or any of the movies you guys have worked on? That's I mean, we tend to outline together okay. as specifically as we can. 
uh, and then we'll split up scenes. We mm-hmm. don't sit at the typewriter. Typewriter. What year is this? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> you never know. And she walks in and says, <laughs> 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 "Hey, run this media around." <laughs> We actually, yeah, we write on a typewriter. That's one of our things we do. Talking this voice from now on. But it's say, Harry, right. how's that scene coming? Right at you, boss. Hold on. Yeah. Set it down to the pool. If, uh, if we so, we are we outline together, uh-huh. and then we split up scenes. Okay. We'll split up the outline. Show a couple scenes. I wrote a couple scenes, and then we trade off. We used to go back a lot more while we were writing. Mm-hmm. Now it's all about forward momentum. Like, okay. we'll fix it in the next draft. Like, let's just get to the end. And we do, we write our first drafts very quickly. Uh-huh. Uh, and then we go through and then we rewrite. Like, the pilot took us, I think the pilot took us maybe a week to write the first draft. Really? Okay. But then the rewriting then the re- of course. You know, It took us probably another month to before we were happy with and it. And then the Absolutely. Fight club. <laughs> no. Obviously, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's uh, yeah all about getting to that finish line of the first draft, right? And then all of the writing is in the rewriting for sure. Yeah, it took us a few years to realize that because mm-hmm. we yeah. would the, early on we'd you know argue about scenes and we'd rewrite them and rewrite them again, and then you get to the end, you realize, oh, we're gonna cut that whole thing out. Right, exactly. And you guys had to have gotten so good at kind of just syncing up your your voices really in in the writing, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Did it did it take any any sort of time to get there, or was that sort of right off the bat? No, I think and I think it it's also sort of presents itself very quickly. Who has a ha- better handle on say which character? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it'll all right. You're gonna write these person scenes, and I'll write these people scenes, and we'll just go from there generally. Right, right, right. Now you guys have have written stuff that that other people have directed yes. before. Is it ever? Hard kind of letting go of that of that control. Yeah, it is, I mean it's hard. It's it, different things happen. You know, some of the things that we've uh, worked on that other people have directed, mm. it wasn't even our script that was. You know, we would write a draft and then we'd be off the project and somebody else would come in and then they'd hire a director. Others were kind of our baby the whole way through, right? And then it just gets taken from you when the director comes in. And we haven't had, unfortunately, we haven't had that great experience where the director is very inclusive. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just I know writers who've had that experience with some directors who they, they want the writers on set and it just hasn't been our because the only times we've had that is when we've directed the movie ourselves yeah definitely must be uh, something about us <laughs> <laughs> we turn people off I guess they don't want us around <laughs> now with I, I've, I've got to mention Cat Harley Way is one of my absolute favorite films of all Thanks. time uh, of course if, if you guys don't know wrote and directed Cat Harley Way back in 1998 right we sure. were yeah we were actually in high school when we made that movie. Oh, Not many people know that. God. We went to film school after we made the movie. Now it's movies movies like that movies like like Josie and the Pussycats like we we talked about. There's so there's so there's such kind of time capsules of that moment in in pop culture, which on paper you would think would would lend itself to kind of a short shelf life, but they've developed these followings after years and years and years. Why do you think that is? I don't know. Can, can you tell us how to write the thing that's popular right now? <laughs> right. Because right. 20 years from now is not a good good place to be, generally. <laughs> it's fun to read a lot of articles about how people are appreciating the movies now. Yeah. But it pays better <laughs> when they write those articles <laughs> the week it opens. Right now. That's right. great. Yeah. yeah. So why do, you, why do you think that is if it was kind of a delayed response like that? I don't know. Is it? Do you think it, a lot of it is kind of the nostalgia factor? Like people. I don't know. I feel like anything I say is going to make me sound like a jackass. I mean, no way. I don't know. Too late. I mean, can't hardly wait. Lies. Can't hardly wait. It, t- it, may, it may just be a timing thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it might just be. You know, can't hardly wait was like a little too soon. Mm-hmm. It was a little too soon. It was like just. I don't even know if it was a year before um, American Pie. Right. And suddenly, like that was the field was wide open. You know, it wasn't how how do we market it? It was we had shot it as an R rated movie. They cut it to PG thirteen. It kind of suffered that way. I don't want to lay blame on anyone else. I think sure. it's really just timing. I think everything is about is about timing. I mean, I'll sound like a jackass now, which is I Go think it, it is. I think when you compare it to some of the other high school movies that came out, it's a gentler movie. It's kind of sweeter. Yeah. Like we there we did a screening of it last year. They did an outdoor. Uh, screening at the cemetery. Awesome. I hadn't seen it in a while and, and watched it, and I was surprised at just how sweet and kind of 
heartfelt it is. Yeah. It felt very sincere. And I don't know that that plays that well, you know, when you've, not to put any other movies down, but like right. when you have a guy fucking a pie, like that's a big comedic set piece. Sure. And this was just kind of a sweet movie. And I think that when people started watching it at home, it may have been a more personal experience for some people. Because that's the thing is people come up to us now and say, that was my high school experience or it just it means something to them. And look, I'm sure there are plenty of other people who made teen movies at the time where people come up to them and say the same thing. It's right. just that's what we happen to hear. I forgot to tell you, I was this is a weird story. I was at the I was at the Korean I was at the Korean spa uh-huh, yeah. on Sunday. Um, and as all good stories start with, I was naked in the hot tub. <laughs> and then there were these Wish other... I had that water in my mouth still. <laughs> um, um, there were these girls, they were probably in their late 20s, and they were all sort of like pierced and tattooed, and they were also in the hot tub. And I heard them talking, and she said, and I was at this party, and you know, she said, I, when I felt like when I walked in, like the wind was blowing, she's like, and I was like Amanda in Can't Hardly Wait. And I was like, well, we want to say something, but then we're all naked, and it's weird. And I'm like, hey, I made that movie, but then it was super creepy, but like, I, I forgot That's to great. tell you. So you gotta jump at that chance. Loved by naked girls in Korean spas everywhere. <laughs> it's you know what? It's the stuff of every good stuff. So I should really. go. So I should like go and That's say hi. The lesson. Just I wait, guess. wait that for the them. Takeaway. Wait for them to drop another ref. Um, that was my movie. I think, and with Josie, it was the same thing. I think mm. Josie was definitely like that was a big. You know, we overreached. I think a little bit. <laughs> You know, a satire for 12-year-old girls about it, you know. Right. But again, like, Universal at the time let us make that movie the way we wanted to make that movie. But Mm. then they sold it really, really young. Um, And it was not intended to be for young children. You know, Mm. it's definitely a sharper film about something much sort of deeper and more disturbing, I Interesting, think. okay. And then when they trotted out the marketing for us, it was like purple leopard ears and pink plastic radios, and we are like... <laughs> <laughs> and you know, like there's a moment you know you're like, oh, there's a huge disconnect, and this is not going to work. And right. I think, you know, now in particular, like everything, marketing is just such a huge, huge deal. Right. Um, but there were some people who w- were the young girls who watched that movie and got it, and now they're the ones who've grown up, and it... You know, they're kind of seeing, oh my gosh, it was about so much more. And that's why yeah. I think that's also why you're seeing people talking about it now, because it's the people who saw it one way as a kid and now they're realizing, oh, there's a whole other level going on here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, maybe. I don't know. No, absolutely. It's <laughs> no very, idea. it seemed, yeah, very kind of subversive and ahead of its time. And I think that being portrayed that way in the marketing, I think probably lent itself to that. It's yeah. kind of like, oh, like this wasn't, was that what I was expecting at all? Yeah. But um, so, what else do you guys have coming up? That's going to be appreciated twenty years from now. On your place, <laughs> exactly. Um. <laughs> guys, join us. Join us in twenty thirty six. We'll have them back on. Uh, oh, but he's so old. What else? What else do you guys have coming up that that you're that you're working on that you'd like to promote? Anything like that? Uh, we are we're working on a script for HBO. Uh, mm-hmm. That's a comedy. We're writing with a friend of ours, Jenny Johnson, who's got a big Twitter following. She's a stand-up. Okay. Uh, and but that's just in the development stage. Um, beyond that, there's nothing really. We've had to kind of put everything aside. Uh, this for the show. Yeah. Yeah. This mm-hmm. was like a. This was a. You know, it's a full-time job. You can't work on anything else. We thought we could. Right. You know, we were trying to work on a movie at the same time. We couldn't do that. I mean, <laughs> you're really. I don't. Again, I don't know how. There are people who do it. Mm. I'm not sure how they do it. I guess they don't have children. They're or, not single moms. <laughs> yeah, they're not single moms, or they don't sleep, or I don't yeah. know. Mm. And will, will you guys finally be able to take a break once that finale is as aired? We're we're trying to, but uh, then the you know then you want to just kind you're just of just panicking about the next. Job. What's next? Right, 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 right. It's hard to take a break. I mean, I guess yeah. Well, we'll see. Do you have ideas cooking up about about what is next already? We do. Yeah. Sure. Thinking, yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so, so much for, for joining us. This was absolutely a, a blast. I was very, very excited to get you guys in here to talk about all this. Uh, for our lovely viewers out there, where can they find you? Well, wait, when's the after show of this show? The after show. <laughs> the spotlight on after Who's show. Watch the. Be in a couple hours. Couple we'll have, table. Okay. we'll have you back on to guest on that. Great, perfect. Right. <laughs> it's just a very kind of snake eating its tail of after yeah. shows here at After Buzz TV. But where can they find you? Where can they find you online, on social media? media, all that good stuff. Not like at my house. Not at your house. Don't don't find Deborah at her house. Find her online. Um, eh, 
what, what is, oh, oh, it's, <laughs> I just joined, I just joined Twitter. Aren't they going to put it up? I think it's real Deb Kaplan. Okay. It'll at, be, it'll be right there underneath you oh, on the screen. Thanks. Cause I'm like, is it at Twitter or is it Twitter <laughs> at, um, killing it at social media, you guys. Nailing it. Um, and then, um, right now there's the Mary and Jane Instagram. It's Mary and Jane MTV official. You'll, there you you'll, go. you'll well find it. Yeah. Well, I'm That's sorry. Fine. I'm trying. It's all good, Harry. Uh, at Harry Elfont. That's the Twitter. That's so the only easy. place. Keeping it nice and simple. Super simple. Otherwise, I couldn't. I wouldn't remember. There was already a Deborah Kaplan, and she took all the names. The people were, which oh, great. On. People were tweeting at her about the show. <laughs> well, I mean, our cast members. You know, we're she's running Deb, some Deborah like Kaplan. she's running some like green coalition and saving the earth, and I'm like making a weed show for MTV. It's a much different green. I know. Much different kind of green. I know. Sorry, Deborah Kaplan. Come on, Deb. But at, as always, uh, you can find me online at Ty Matthews PMA. So there's various other after shows, but make sure, more importantly, to check out Mary and Jane on MTV. Uh, how many more episodes is it? Does it have eight more? Just started. Eight, eight more, more and you can still catch last night's episode all week and on the app. And on the website, and I think maybe on Facebook to too. You can find it anywhere. You can find it Someone anywhere. Someone probably already put it on YouTube. <laughs> right. Well, that we don't want. Don't watch that. That one. we don't get credit don't watch for. That one. Oh right, don't watch that. No, one. no, no, no. We don't get ratings. It's easy to watch. You have to put up with a couple commercials on MTV.com. It's fine. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for joining us. That's been our spotlight on, and for you, we'll see you next time. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.